Hi everybody, this is Eugene O'Loughlin, lecturer in computing at the National College of Ireland, and welcome to my series of short how-to videos. In this video, we're going to learn how to calculate students' t-statistic in Excel 2010. So before we go ahead and do the calculations, let's look and see what we might use the t-test for. Over here on my left-hand side in columns B and C, I've got two groups of data. In group A, I've got 13 measures, and in group B, I've got 10 measures. Now, it doesn't matter what these measures are, but these could be heights, they could be weights, they could be numbers of errors, they could be numbers of customer complaints, or any kind of a measure. We use the t-test, student's t-test, to compare the means between two samples. These samples are not the same in size, but that doesn't matter for a student t-test. And in the diagram here on my middle and right-hand side, I've got the t-distribution, and essentially what a, a t-test is all about is the following. I need to calculate the t-statistic here in the centre, and that's going to be a positive value to the right or a negative value to the left, and we're going to do that with Excel in a moment. We need to determine our significance level, so we're going to go with the standard normal one here of 5%, and that's alpha equal to 0 0.05. And we need to be able to determine what the critical value is at that level. So if our t-statistic is greater than that value, it falls into this white region here, which is the reject, the null hypothesis region. Or if it's less than the critical value, it means that we do not have enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis. In other words, we are accepting the null hypothesis. So let's take a look at some data and see what all of this means. I've got my same uh, groups of measures here for group A and group B on the left-hand side. And as always with statistics, it's a good idea to state your null and alternate hypothesis up front. In a t-test, the null hypothesis is usually that there is no difference between the means. In other words, mu1, the mean for group A, is the same as mu2, the mean for group B. And our h1, the alternative hypothesis, is that they are not the same. And this tells us that we're going to be using a two-tailed test here. And I've got my significance level at 5%, alpha equal to 0 0.05. So we need to be able to use Excel's tools to calculate the t-test for us. Now, by, def by default, this tool is not available in Excel, so we've got to add this in first. So the first thing I need to do is go to the File ribbon, select Options, and in the Excel Options uh, window here, click on Add-ins, the second last one here on the left-hand side. And down at the bottom, you can manage the Excel add-ins, so just click the Go button here. And you get a small add-ins window which shows you some uh, options that you can add in here. Analysis tool pack, which is the top one, is the one you need. So check that box and click on OK. And what that does is on the data rhythm, rhythm, ribbon, it has added in this data analysis tool over here on the right-hand side. So click on that. And that brings us up our data analysis windows with lots of different tools that you'd be familiar with from statistics like ANOVA and correlation and so on in there. And we need to scroll down to see where the t-tests are. Now you'll see straight off that there are three of them. The first one is for a paired two sample for means, so um, our samples are unpaired, so we won't use that one. The second one here is a two sample assuming equal variances, and the third one is a two sample assuming unequal variances. Now we have unequal samples over here, so this is the one that we need a t-test, two sample assuming unequal variances. So I click on OK. And now Excel is asking me for the data that I need. So the first one, the variable one range, I'm going to just select, click on the select button here, and select all the values in column B for group A. And note I'm not including the header here. Click the select button again. Do the same for the variable two range. Click the select button and select the 10 values in group B here. So that's all our data. We can see that our significance level defaults to um, 5%, so alpha is set at 0 0.05 here. You can change that to uh, other values like 0 0.01 or 0 0.1, whichever you choose. And I'm going to change down here in the output options, just I'm going to click on the output range button and select a place in, on my spreadsheet where I want my output to appear and click on OK. And this gives me a table of information. Now, it's calculated a lot of statistics for me here. You can see that there's a mean, a variance, number of observations, uh, and degrees of freedom. These are all standard statistics uh, that you should know how to do by now. And the important one that we're looking for here is our t-statistic, which I'm going to highlight here in yellow. And this statistic is uh, our value. We now need to know if this uh, represents a significant uh, value at alpha equal to 0 0.05. So I'm going to look that up on a t-table. So the t-table I have here is um, a Wikipedia's t-table. 
and I can see from my Excel data that there are 19 degrees of freedom, so that means I go across the 19 row here, and it's two-sided or two-tailed test at 95%, representing 0 0.05. So that's my column here, and you can see I've highlighted the critical value here of 2.093. So I need to know if my t-statistic is greater than or less than that value, and you can see that my t-statistic of 4.9485 is greater than my critical value. Therefore, it falls into the reject region uh, in our t-distribution, and we can reject, in this case, the null hypothesis that the two means are the same. In other words, we are saying that there is a difference statistically between group A and group B. There's another interesting uh, uh, figure here as well, and that's the p-value down here. And we can also calculate this using a formula within Excel. So I'm going to put that over here on the right-hand side. And let's say t, um, uh, t uh, dot test is what this is called. And I need a value for this here. So uh, this is available in the formulas ribbon. So click on formulas, go to more functions, and choose statistical, and scroll down until you get to um, the t-test option. So select that. And this is similar to the window that we've already had, so I want to put in array number one, so let's select the values in group A. In array number two, select the values of group B. In tails, uh, this can either have a one a value of one or a value of two. We already, according to our hypothesis, know that this is a two-tailed test, so I'm going to put in the value of two in there. And in the type, this is the one that tells us whether it's a, a paired test or a a two-sample equal variance, or in our case, we're looking for a value of three, which is a two-sample unequal variance. So type in three in there, and press OK. Now this gives us a number here, 8.948 to the power of 10 by minus 0 0.5. Just want to change that to a, a, a numerical number, so check on number, and I'm going to up the number of decimal places here to nine. And I'm also going to see that we have uh, over here as well, I'm just going to highlight this in yellow as well, that our p-value over here is 8.91 to the power of 10 to the power of minus 5. So I'm going to change that to a numerical value as well and increase it to nine decimal places because that's what my other figures are. And select OK. So I can see that my t-test function uh, from the uh, formulas ribbon gives us a very small value, um, 0 0.000089. That matches uh, the one that our um, um, data analysis tool has given us as well. And this is the probability figure. And if the probability is uh, less than our alpha figure, in our case 0 0.05, we can also reject the null hypothesis. So it's a quick way of figuring out if your t-test tells you there's a difference between the two. So because our value here is, is small, much smaller than 0 0.05, we can reject the null hypothesis. In other words, there is, that there's no difference between the means. In other words, there is statistically a difference between the means of group A and group B. So that's how you calculate a student's t statistic in um, Excel 2010. I hope you found this video useful. Thank you for your attention.